A remarkable show of dissent against the invasion of Ukraine happening in the unlikeliest of places, Russian state TV. On Wednesday night, a Russian filmmaker said this to a pro-Putin anchor. The war in Ukraine paints a frightening picture, and we should be aware that it has a very oppressive influence on our society, emotionally. This is Ukraine. Whatever your attitude may be, it is something to which we are bound by dozens and hundreds of ties. It is where the suffering of some innocents is no compensation for the suffering of other innocents. Out front now, Ekaterina Kodrakadze, news director and anchor at TV Rain, an independent Russian outlet uh, that says it was shut down by the government. And uh, Ekaterina, I really appreciate your time. As TV Rain staff signed mm -hmm. off, I know your network plane Swan Lake in a nod to the 1991 coup attempt of Mikhail Gorbachev, because as that coup attempt unfolded, uh, state TV played Swan Lake. And that's how people knew that something was amiss, that something was wrong. Uh, and obviously, uh, that was the, the statement that you all made when you were forced off the air uh, in light of these, these new laws, right, that could put someone in prison for 15 years for even calling this a war. In that context, when you heard that very pro-Putin anchor interviewing somebody who had been for uh, the Crimea invasion, as I understand it, who says the suffering of innocents are no compensation for the suffering of other innocents, uh, the war is, uh, the war, calling it a war, is a frightening picture. We should be aware it has an oppressive influence on our society. Did, did it surprise you to hear that? <clears throat> well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. And, um, Answering your question, well, yes, I was surprised because you can hear such things and such thoughts on Russian state uh, television, but, you know, this is an exception. You can't, you can find a lot of people, a lot of guests uh, on this tel television channels who could say something like that, who could say even a couple of words about the victims of this so-called special operation. Mainly, they go on with this terrible propaganda, claiming that there are Nazis sitting in Kiev, that Zelensky and other people who are now on the front line, that they are fascists uh, trying to kill Russians in Donbas. And they are, you know, going on with this myth, terrible fake, that NATO is a threat to Russia and Ukraine, together with NATO, are um, are trying to destroy Russian Federation with a nuclear weapon or biological weapon or such, you know, terrible fakes that they, you know, they're trying to spread and people really believe it. Not everyone in Russia, definitely not, but there are a lot of millions, I suppose, who still watch television, who come back home from work and they, you know, automatically they just switch on um, this in the channels and they really trust these guys. So, so, and you talk about, you know, the, these absolutely untrue, you know, pr propaganda that they put out there. Um, after Russian airstrikes damaged that maternity ward in Mariupol this week, um, the AP published pictures, and I know you saw these, Ekaterina, of course, of a pregnant woman injured by the attack. Mm -hmm. So then the Russian embassy in London puts out her picture, and, uh, and, and Twitter eventually deleted these tweets but says these photos are staged, that she was an actress, uh, that she was, you know, I guess, pretending to be pregnant, pretending to be there, you know, basically that, uh, that this was all staged, uh, that they didn't, they didn't hurt anybody. Uh, that's a lie. Um, she was pregnant. She has actually since given birth to a baby girl named Veronica. I'm going to show you. There she is. Images captured by the AP again, showing her uh, with that new baby there in Mariupol, debunking what the Russians were claiming. Is that kind of propaganda, putting that out and saying that that pregnant woman who gave birth to a child who was in that hospital, that she was some kind of an actress, do people believe that in Russia? Well, because they don't check information that they get. A lot of people doesn't just, they, they don't do that. They don't have a habit of checking information. There is another problem that uh, the reliable media sources, information sources, are banned and blocked in Russia, just as TV Rain is. People are searching right now. I'm personally getting thousands of messages from people who are asking, you know, begging for rebuilding of TV Rain, for example, or radio station Echo of Moscow, which was very influential as well, just to get some information because people are exhausted people are people are devastating and confused they just cannot understand what's going on and um you know some of russians just don't read in english they don't understand where to go and 
you know, they, they don't watch CNN or other reliable sources. So it's a real problem. And, you know, it's, it's getting me crazy when I just, you know, every time I, I hear or see this kinds of fakes or propaganda. I remember that years ago, when um, everything has started in 2014 in Ukraine, Russian state television, the first channel, uh, has actually, uh, uh, you know, told the story about a little boy that was killed uh, by uh, fascists in Ukraine, and this story became the symbol of fakes there was no boy i mean it was, it was all manufactured and um you know after that i can't believe that people still switch television and they still trust this guys telling them this lies but yeah i mean this is um unfortunately after the years of this aggressive propaganda 24 7 lying on screens yes. some of people unfortunately are not defended but by, by you know um, against this.